afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have to apologize in advance. My voice is a little hoarse, um, so it's not as pleasant, um, but um, I'll do my best. Um, welcome to this very important event. It's one of the events as part of the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration here at Bristol Community College. And we're very happy to have these three wonderful ladies join us today to talk about um, their experiences um, and their lives and their careers, academic and um, their lives as a whole. Uh, but before we go any further, I would like to introduce to you um, Dr. Uh, Jack Spraga, who is going to say a few welcome words uh, to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another uh, wonderful event and our uh, uh, Hispanic uh, Heritage Latino celebration for the month of October. And uh, I want to thank the students for uh, uh, contributing to this uh, panel. And uh, it's a very important topic, uh, managing life and work and studying. And uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy for anyone. Uh, uh, so I'm anxious to hear what they have to say. And I, I do want to thank uh, uh, Professor Soren Tripp for his uh, uh, leadership in, uh, in providing the celebrations uh, for this month. And also, of course, uh, uh, for Olivia and the great work that she does, uh, with or without her voice, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm as anxious as you are uh, to hear from the panel. And uh, I hope we can get, get started. And uh, I thank you again, Livia, for allowing me to say hello. And we want to show the support of the college uh, behind this uh, a very important effort. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so first I would like to um, introduce to you our three panelists. Um, Luz Perez, um, Marie, uh, Marie Carmen Colasso River, Rivera, I'm sorry, and Johanna Morales at the end. Um, so um, they're going to take a couple of minutes, maybe just a minute, to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more information about who they are and where they come from and their role here at PCC. Okay? So, um, Luz, please, you can use them. Good afternoon. Can you hear me clearly? <laughs> Hi, I'm Luz Perez. Um, I'm currently a staff associate for the Cooperative Education and Internship Program here at BCC. I'm also currently um, finishing my associate's degree in office administration while also um, going through um, a new, um, I want to say not a change of career, but I guess something else that interested me, which is also the Spanish and English interpreting program that we have here, the certificate. Um, I am from Puerto Rico. Um, but I've been here in the United States since the age of two, so it's been quite a while. Um, and I'm a mom of three. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Marie Carmen Colazo Rivera. You can call me Marie, I know that's uh, quite a mouthful. Um, I am currently a type of two in human resources. I am alumni of BCC. I'm working towards my BA in psychology with Leslie University, and I'm also from Puerto Rico. Um, I moved here when I was two as well. Thank you very much. Last but not least, <laughs> Johanna. Hi, um, I'm Joanna Morales. Um, I am a returning student at BCC. Um, I am a mother of two, and I'm working on my uh, BA in accounting. Um, also, I... Um, I am Puerto Rican, and I've been here for about uh, since 1988. Thank you very much. All right, very interesting ladies with very interesting backgrounds. So um, we have a few questions that we're going to ask them, and we're going to give them a few minutes to answer them. Um, if you have any questions, um, they have told me that you should feel free to interrupt, and not interrupt, but if you have any questions, following up their answers, just um, make, you know, feel free to, to ask them. We don't have to wait, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't have to wait until the end um, 
to ask them the questions, okay? So the first question we have for you ladies is, could you please um, tell us a little bit about your cultural background and what brought you to the United States? Okay, like I mentioned before, um, I come from, I was born in Puerto Rico. Um, I was not raised there, so my cultural background to me is, I guess I see it differently than maybe what others might see it. Um, when my parents came here, um, they came under the idea that they wanted us to have a better education, um, a better lifestyle than what they were brought off. Um, and not being raised in Puerto Rico, to me, is it's what made me more interested in finding where I was from and getting an idea of, you know, where I stood as a Latina. Um, that's okay. Pretty, Good. Pretty much my story. So, um, like Luz, I have similar. I came here when I was two, and the reason that my parents or my mother decided to move to the United States was for the health reasons. Um, all my siblings, my two sisters, um, were sick, but mostly me. I am a diabetic, and when my parent, my mother decided to come here, it was because the doctor said that if I didn't move here, I would die. So for her, it wasn't because she didn't have a good life. She had a restaurant in Puerto Rico. She had a house. She had a life together. But for her, it was a matter of saving my life, and I am very grateful for that. Um, and once we moved here, we stayed here, and I'm bicultural. I am as much Latina as I am American. And I think with being bicultural, sometimes it's difficult finding where you belong and who you are as a Latin American. All set? Okay, so um, I've been in Far River since I was seven. Um, but before that, we were living in New York for a while. Um, I, I myself was born in New York, but I do have a uh, a sister who was born in Puerto Rico. Um, so I've basically been in Far River for most of my life. I agree with uh, what Lou said. Um, there have been times where, because I wasn't, uh, because I didn't grow up in Puerto Rico, there, there is a lot that I don't even know about uh, Puerto Rico itself. And, um, you know, I, I visit and I try to, you know, learn as much as I can. Um, so. I mean, I, I liked being here, but I felt in a way that I was missing that um, background. Um, and like this stories that my mom tells me about the way that she grew up and, and the way that uh, um, uh, the things that she did as, as she was growing up, um, which is completely different when you're raising a, a child here. Um, so I, I believe I missed out in a lot of that. Um, yeah. But I, at the same time, I do think that being here, um, I was given an advantage um, uh, educationally, too. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, moving on. Um, what difference does speaking a second language make in your lives? I'll start. Um, for me, I, I'm lucky that I speak both languages. Um, I remember I would come home after a long day at school. My mom's like, you can only speak Spanish at home. And I'm glad she did that because I can communicate with my parents and my grandparents. Um, but sometimes if I spend too much time speaking English, I forget Spanish and it just sounds very foreign to me. Um, but there is an advantage, I believe. Um, I mean, now we have a lot of Latinos who don't speak. English. I mean, growing up, I was constantly translating for my parents. Um, and I'm glad that I speak both languages. Anybody else would like to? Okay. Um, as I mentioned in the previous answer to the previous question, um, not being raised in Puerto Rico and having that educational background or being able to explore more of the culture gave me more an interest of wanting to, to learn to speak um, lang the Spanish as my second language. Like um, Marie Carmen mentioned, when we're raised in our households, 
um, my parents were the same way. You, you're in the house now, you speak Spanish. So they pretty much taught me how to speak it. And I, because of my interest of wanting to know where I come from and all this, I was able to push myself to learn it as a second language and was able for us to communicate to each other. Also, um, I was able to use that has helped them with interpreting to the appointments, um, scheduling um, appointments at the school where they needed to go for parent meeting conferences. Um, I think it's, it's, it's for me personally, it's made a big, big difference. It's, it's a good one. Well, one of the advantages that I can think of that I, I'm actually experiencing nowadays is, well, actually for the last few years, is the, um, even though I don't like to do it much, but when I do it, I feel a sense of uh, pride when you're able to uh, translate for someone else who doesn't speak English. And sometimes, um, like a few days ago, I just happened to be at this place and there was um, someone in, you know, like a group of people talking and they couldn't uh, translate for her. And I, um, I mean, I don't like to judge, but she looked like she spoke Spanish. So I asked her, you know, do you speak Spanish? I can help you out. So I translated for her and I was able to help her with um, what she was, what she needed at the moment. So um, even though um, I don't like translating that much, when we, when I actually do it, it's, it's nice, it's a feeling of pride that I get, you know, knowing that I was able to help that person. And it also reminds me of the advantage that I have that I'm not in that situation where I need a translator. Um, I, actually all my life, I, I knew how to read, write, and speak Spanish. I don't even remember how it was that I learned, I guess just from being home with my mom. She, um, she was all, she knows a little English. It was always Spanish at home, but um, I didn't have, um, my parents were not like, okay, only Spanish, you know, we could speak English whenever we wanted, but they did, um, I, I did grow up in an environment where there was so much Spanish that I never lost it, and, and I was able to grow up reading and writing. <coughs> so I think it helps to like, you know, for anyone to know a second la language because it helps with jobs. Um, it helps, um, well, right now as a mom, you know, I, I can go to my uh, children's meetings and understand what's going on with their schoolwork and everything, you know? So, um, it, I mean, it's nice to have a translator, but it's even better when you can understand it yourself and you don't need someone else to translate for you. Thank you. Any questions? I'm curious if you are teaching your children to speak Spanish, and you know, if so, why or why not? Can I answer that? <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I really want to answer that because um, I feel disappointed in myself because I, I wanted my kids to, to learn Spanish and to grow up speaking Spanish, but I didn't keep up with it. I have a six-year-old and a 13-year-old, and my six-year-old knows more than my 13-year-old because I think, you know, I learned from the first time around. Um, but they're still not fully bilingual. And this kids, uh, I have friends who have kids that are six years old and they're like fully bilingual. You know, they, they have their English classmates and, and at home it's Spanish. And, you know, I'm disappointed because I didn't keep up with it. But yeah, it, it's something, it's, it, it's important and not only is it important, but it's good for them too because of their family. Um, this past summer, I had a, a vacation to Puerto Rico and they couldn't communicate with their family members. It was all English, so yeah. But I mean, I myself didn't do it, but I believe it's something important to, to do. I agree with um, Joanna. I think it's very, very important. Um, I have three children, like I mentioned, and my 12-year-old is the only one out of my three who's having difficulties um, speaking it. She can understand it, 
but she has difficulty speaking it to me. And I'm not forcing her to speak to me, but I want her to feel comfortable enough to where she could use Spanish as a second language because it's part of who she is. Um, out of the three that I have, my little one is the one that could keep up a good conversation. And she's eight, and she could keep a good conversation. She's been to appointments with my grandmother, for, uh, with her grandmother for therapy. And my mother has mentioned to me, she goes, I don't even have to open my mouth. She'll sit there and talk to the doctor like if I can't understand. So, and that makes me feel like I'm doing a good job, like good. Um, the reason why I also would like them to continue to keep up with the language is because at one point I would like to take a family trip and I would like them to go and be able to communicate with family members that they, don't, they haven't seen yet or met and not be sitting in that corner saying, I don't understand what they're saying. What are they offering me? I want them to feel comfortable enough to be like, my mom did well. And maybe at some point, as they grow up, you know, even pick up a third, a third language. So. Can I just add something to that? Sure. Um, uh, well, like I said, I didn't keep up with their language, uh, with their second language, teaching it, uh, it to them. But I do make sure, um, and this was, I think for me, this was bigger than, uh, than teaching them the language, but I make sure that they know their culture, their background. Yeah. Uh, this uh, uh, Puerto Rican traditions that we do at home. And, um, and they question me, oh, well, why are we doing this this way? And I'm like, well, you know, this is what I grew up doing and, and this is a, a tradition and, you know, and I, uh, I teach it to them, the meaning of it and, and how it's done. Um, I, I've introduced them to a lot of family members, whether it's uh, through pictures or, or through the internet. Uh, but um, for them to know their background as um, uh, Puerto Ricans, that's very important too. Thank you. You don't have any kids? No. <laughs> any other questions? So there are some people in society who kind of reject the use of languages other than English in public. <clears throat> they get very angry about it. What would you like to tell them, if you could, um, to kind of reject that very negative kind of attitude? Can I take that? Okay. Um, my mother um, does not speak a bit of English. And I know a lot of people always assume like, oh, she didn't learn or she didn't want to learn or she didn't care to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's not that at all. Over the past 20 years, she's taken several classes. I, I, I think every other year she was taking classes. And for her, it wasn't that she didn't want to learn. It was that when she would go, a lot of the people teaching it didn't speak Spanish. So there was already that communication barrier. And many times I would go and try to help, but she's already self-conscious about how she's speaking it so when the teacher or other students would make comments or would giggle and laugh that would always that would always put up another barrier for her so she can understand it and many times she and she can read it but speaking it to her i think mentally she just blocked that out because she's like i don't want to be embarrassed but i've seen her in in situations where she has to because there's no one there and she does speak it well so I'm always very surprised to see her come out of her box and speak the language. But for, I think for many of the people who are learning English in general, it's just that I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to sound dumb. So for those who judge and say, oh, well, they just don't want to learn, it's not that at all, I think. I'm sure that there are those people who, you know, who are very proud and they're like, oh, this is my language. but it's just a barrier, especially when you're older, it's a little bit harder to learn. So, anyone else want to add? Um, my thing is when we use um, our second language out in public or as you were saying outside, um, I, I've been some caught, I've caught people at certain times giving me that stare look, like, you know, we're sitting here, or in an English-speaking environment, why aren't you speaking 
the English language. And I, my perspective on that is more towards why aren't you more interested in our culture or wanting to learn and pick up the language? Because nowadays, it's Latinos, is, it's, a, it's a fast growing population in the United States. We have to admit that. Um, so to me, when someone comes to, to me with that stare of, of, you know, why are you speaking Spanish when we're all sitting here and cannot understand you? And, it's, and I get it, because maybe they'll think I'll be having conversations about them or my surroundings. But it's more of a, like, why aren't you interested in learning to pick up a few things? And, and when I mention that the Latinos are a fast-growing population, language nowadays, if, if you look at it, a second language is like a must. Whether you're Portuguese, Spanish, Asian, wherever you come from, it's, it's, it's part of us, it's part of the community nowadays, it's a second language. I, I would say be interested in knowing about the culture. I think it's also a comfort thing. Um, I mean, if you're here, like, well, let's say Far River, and you know, uh, it could be one of our parents, or even just us. We could be outside this building right now, having a conversation, and we decide to switch from English to Spanish. But it's not that. Uh, I admit there are times when people use it because they're trying to hide things. So okay, let's say it in Spanish because nobody else understands it. But I think most of the time it's because it's just something that we like. This is our language. Let's use it. You know, um, I know that they understand it, so I'm gonna pull it out and use it. You know, it's not um, especially here. It's not all the time that we get to, you know, um, and and that would happen with. Um, any other language, Portuguese or you know any other language. Um, so I think you should let them. That's um, that's like doing a hobby. You like doing your hobby. Maybe the people around you don't like your hobby, but that doesn't mean you know you should stop doing it. Can I actually add something else? So something that Joanna and um, Luz had mentioned is. Um, the comfort, and I think when someone is speaking Spanish, our tone tends to be, um, or very high, or we tend to be loud, and I say we're passionate. Um, so it, when we're speaking, and um, if you don't understand and we're speaking the way in our tone, sometimes you think that we're yelling or we're fighting, and it's not that at all. I mean, I've been out with my family, and we, we tend to talk amongst each other, so one conversation turns into like three conversations at the table and people are like, are they fighting? And it's not that, it's just how we speak. So if you don't understand that or where we're coming from, you kind of get set off by it and you think, oh, should we like not talk or... So I think that's another thing that, you know, we have to take into consideration. All right. Thank you. Did I answer your question? Any other questions? I think deep down inside, everybody wishes that they could speak more than one language, and they're just a little jealous that they can't, you know? Um, and just on a side note, I think that in Fall River, don't you dare speak Spanish or Portuguese and think that nobody else <laughs> understands, <laughs> because everybody here can speak that. Um, okay, so let's move on. Um, do you think that being a Hispanic, Latino, uh, puts you at an advantage or hinders you when it comes to competing for an opportunity in higher education? Why and why not? Shall I start? You have the microphone. Okay. <laughs> so I think that there's the pros and the cons. Um, I, some, we've discussed this question oftentimes, and I think there's advantage because of the language and you know, when I went to school, everyone's like, well, when you speak two languages, you're gonna go out, you're gonna find a job, and it wasn't that easy. It's not just I speak English and Spanish and I'm gonna get a job. But there are their advantages. I think now there's more resources and people are more knowledgeable and more understanding. So I think that's an advantage. But there are those times where because of the stereotypes that people have, it can hinder. It can definitely put up a wall and it comes from a place of not understanding where we're coming from. Thank you. 
No, um, I just agree with, uh, with what Marie said. It, there are times when because of, um, uh, because of your, your different culture, your different language, people assume, um, you know, the, the negative and really, you know, they just, um, at first you're not given that chance. So it, you kind of almost have to prove yourself at times. Um, but it, it is a plus in the fact that, you know, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can uh, translate for, for customers and, and even for yourself. And um, uh, yeah, besides the, the language, there are other skills that you need for um, jobs. So it's not, you know, just knowing the language like you said, um, but it does help to uh, put your foot in the door. Thank you. Do you want to comment on that? I, I think it's a good advantage that we, that being a Latino, um, it's, I don't want to say I'm competing, but yeah, competing when it's with someone else. Um, knowing that, that, um, that I have a second language and knowing that if I apply for a job and they're looking for someone who is fluent, that can speak, can read and write Spanish, and we're competing for the same job position, knowing that I have already that, that pro against, that, that, skill, that skill towards me, it gives me a more, a more, a more confidence that I'll be taking that, that position compared to another person. Um, but there are moments that has its cons, because then you have other people with the same skills wanting the same thing and then now it becomes a competition a real competition um i think also for for a, a latino student um in education um when it comes to education many of many of us or many of you as students also have have given the, the chance to take a second language and me having to have take have spanish already in my background gives me that advantage any other student. But to me, it's good because I could help out the student. Um, I'm currently in, in, in one of the classes where I have a student who, a classmate, who has a little bit of difficulties pronouncing certain things. So when I'm able to use my skills and help her pronounce the certain words, to me, it's like, yay, I'm being useful with my language. I'm helping someone else. And it gives me a, you know, it's helping me feel good about myself when I'm helping them in their education. So. Thank you. Any questions about that? No? Okay, moving on. Could you talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you have encountered as a Latino, Hispanic person, and some of the, less, some of the lessons that you have learned along the way, especially when it comes to managing college, life, and work. Okay. Um, so for me, um, it you know there are the challenges um, because there's this idea of what a Latino or for me what a Puerto Rican should be. So when I was in elementary, middle, and high school, there was always this idea of the Latina girl, the Puerto Rican girl, was loud and obnoxious, um, and they didn't care about school. So when I was going to school and I was taking AP classes or taking advanced classes, many times I was the only Latina in the class. And it made it a little bit difficult just because sometimes they weren't very receiving um, towards me. I mean, and I, you do have those teachers who are great and you have those teachers who change your life, but then you have those people who do already have that idea of you're not gonna make it or you're not smart enough. So the biggest challenge wasn't so much what they said or what they did, but what I believed. So you come, you, you, I, you don't struggle um, so much with the classwork, but you struggle with your mind and your thoughts and should I try or should I stand out and try, while you're trying to fit in, especially when you're young. I mean, luckily now that I'm at BCC, um, there are more Latinos and, and everywhere, not just as students, but faculty and staff. So I feel more comfortable. 
but you know, because I had those negative experiences so young, I still constantly fight with my mind and my thoughts like, do I continue? And when I went for my bachelor's when I first started, I stopped because of fear. It wasn't that I was gonna fail, but fear that I was succeeding and no one would really understand that, you know? And I, it's challenging when you have these ideas of who you wanna be and where you wanna go, and no one really supports you because they don't understand. Even getting into BCC, if it hadn't been for the programs that they had, I wouldn't know what financial aid was. I wouldn't know what classes to take. I wouldn't be where I am now. I've been offered opportunities here at BCC that I never imagined I would have had because I had a dream of what I wanted to go into and what I wanted to do, but I had no one to look up to and say, hey, this is what you have to do. Again? Okay. Um, with this question that it says, um, lessons that I, have heard, that I have learned or the challenges that I've encountered, um, in order for me to be able to manage all this, or even you yourselves, you need a good support system. I personally didn't have a good support system. Um, I was raising three children by myself. So the idea of me trying to get back to school, um, work, and raise three children is really tough. Really, really <laughs> tough. Um, the way I'm, I'm being able to do it now is pretty much put a goal, set a goal for myself, and pushing myself to get to that goal. Being able to manage full-time classes is tough. But when you're also working, it's even tougher. And then when you have, you know, three children who are waiting at home, when's dinner gonna be ready, we need help with our homework assignments, it's even tougher. So I would say that my challenges were not having a good, good support system, um, or maybe even a, a way of setting a schedule with how I wanted everything to work out at the end of the day. Um, I'm still managing all that right now. Still, it's still all learning process for me. Um, but it's more, I think, it's how I was raised. Like I had to, I was taught to be very more independent, not to rely on other people. So I think that was like a lesson. It's I'm still learning and going through it right now. Well, for me, um, I'm basically a first generation uh, college student, so. Um, it had a lot to do with the support system too. I, I didn't have that. Um, when I, um, I mean, I'm back in school now after 10 years, but I started uh, uh, college right after high school and I didn't know how the college uh, system worked. I, I had to um, figure out the whole financial aid and, and well, everything, tuition, all that stuff and how how to buy your books and um, how to pick your classes. I was basically on my own for everything. Um, I, I didn't have anybody in my family who's been through that. Um, so yeah, that was my uh, my biggest thing. But another. Um, Do you want me to repeat the question? No, it's all right. Um, yeah, well, I, <laughs> I was just reading about the work and college life. Um, I think now after 10 years and having that experience behind me, I, I'm better at dealing with it now because um, I know what it's like. I know what's expected of me at the school and, and you know, I, I have my kids at home and they're grown now. I think I can, um, back then when I, I was here 10 years ago, they were babies, so I wasn't able to uh, to do much back then. Um, so not only that, but I believe my kids give me uh, another reason to to finish uh, my education to to be a good example for them. 
Thank you. Any questions? No? Okay, Leslie, um, during your journey so far, was there someone in your life you considered a mentor? And if so, what lessons did you learn that you would want to pass on to future generations? Um, so I'll start that one. Um, I think along the way, I've met people who've supported me. Um, I've had great teachers who believed in me more than I believed in myself sometimes. Um, and I've had support system as I went through my journey. I haven't had that one person who's been there from the beginning. Um, but I think it was, I knew where I wanted to be and I knew that I just had to get there. So for me, it was just a mental, preparing myself mentally to go to where I wanted to be. Like, I always say that going to school has been the most selfish thing I've done because you're constantly having to choose what you're going to do, especially in a Latino community, family is a big thing. So I'm having to balance family with my schoolwork, with my own work and all these things that come up. Um, so I've been very fortunate to have coworkers who are very supportive of me and my siblings. I'm the youngest of nine and I've actually been the first, I was the first one to go to college and after I finished, my si two of my siblings decided to come back and get their associates and are continuing. So being the youngest of nine, you constantly have someone to look up to and to like push you to where you need to go. So coming to college, it was, I did that on my own, but I feel that I can set an example for them and they, them seeing me succeed has pushed them to want to pursue going to college as well. Um, the person who I look to the most uh, would be my mom, but um, <coughs> these last uh, 10 years as I was sitting home working and not in school, um, I got to uh, see a lot of my uh, friends and, and classmates from, from high school and, and, and even middle school. Um, they, they got married and they graduated and so every time I heard of a, a new person finishing their degree, it was like, oh no, I need to go back because I really, really wanted to go back. Um, but like I said before, it, it's also, um, I, also, I also now have the, um, my kids as a reason, you know, I, I want to do this for them, show them that it's, uh, it's important. Um, they, they knew that, uh, well, especially my older one, my 13-year-old, he knows that I, I did take some classes before, but that I had never finished. So he's 13 now, he's gonna be a freshman next year. So how can I, in the future, you know, push him to go to college if I haven't finished myself? So, um, but that's, um, that's my biggest thing right now. And um, my advice for, for him and, and, and the future generation it would, well, from my experience, it would be try to do it as quickly as possible. Don't wait 10 years later and, you know. But, you know, uh, take your time if you need to, but it, it's very important. You, it, even, it's, it's like people say, it's never too late. Um, I, as well, do not have a, a specific mentor. Um, a long, my journey um, towards my degree, I've had, had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people along the way who have given me that motivation to say you could do it. Um, they, didn't, they didn't see that I was a single mom. They didn't see that I was struggling at the moment. And they didn't see that I had the whole second language also. To them it was more like, you have a second language, what can you do with it? You know, you have three children, what would you want to leave Has you know, an example for them? And along the way, I've been grateful to have met a lot of other people. Um, I have two coworkers that have been the greatest, greatest, um, I could, maybe I could consider them mentors um, that have been with me, um, supported me through all this, and um, no matter what, have been able to give me a little bit of their guidance um, 
through education, whether it's personal life, whether it's has co-workers. Um, so for a mentor, I would probably just consider them my co-workers. Um, the lessons that I have learned along the way through this process that I've been going through um, and the, the success that I've had is the motivation, like Joanna would say, for my kids. Um, I would want to pass along to them that education is a number one. Um, having a second language is also, it's also good. And I would like to them to, the way they see me and they're happy for me when they see me like today, this morning my son was like, good luck today mom and, and you're, in your the, the panel talk and hope you do good and maybe someday I'll be there and like just seeing him his reaction to that was like I'm doing something good this is what I want I want them to see that if I could do it most definitely they could do it um, I guess I want to be their mentor I want them to look at me with success and know that mom did it I didn't have that growing up. Uh, I agree with um, Joanna and Mary Carmen. Our parents didn't go to college, barely made high school. In my case, in my household, um, so far I'm the only one. You know, so I'm pretty happy yes. for that. <laughs> um, and even to my, to my brother, um, he sees it as an example, and he says to me, even though we're, I'm at an age where I am right now, I would like to at some point be where you're at. So, if you do have a mentor, follow, learn. You know, there's a lot of things we can learn from anybody. Everybody is always, you'll, you'll meet people along the way, and I guess, learn, just, just learn. And you'll find what's good. Be open, right? Exactly. Thank you so much, ladies. Any questions? Final questions, comments you would have? I think, it, I think it's important to what you mentioned about being, having mentors, because sometimes we are born in places when we're surrounded by families. We can pick, but sometimes we don't, and it shows what you're telling me shows uh, how hard it is because, uh, I mean, yes, they provide school, they, I mean, free snacks, whatever, but that's not all. You know, society thinks that by providing, you know, elementary school and the bus taking you back and forth, that's it. Why, why, why you are not a lawyer if, you, if I give you that? And that's not enough. Uh, we have some... Uh, from an educational perspective, that's a very hostile environment for you to get a higher education. Uh, so no wonder how many people, you know, don't don't get to hear here. So is I think what uh, Luz mentioned is very important that you have to look for mentorships. You have to look like even if you have to. I'm surprised that you don't you didn't mention Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> you know her, you know. <laughs> because I mean, well, she's a mot she motivates people. I mean, she motivates me a lot. But as a matter of fact, I'm not ashamed to say that I watch Oprah Winfrey. Okay. <laughs> so, but yes, that's why we have TV. And so, because you look at those role models, you see right. how these people, that hard life she had, and she. So what I'm saying is, you find you have to find out strategies to look around, to right. look not just to say this is what is, for me, and cannot do anything about it. No, you can do that. You just have to look for. For instance, your co-workers, in case of Luz, I mean, uh, it's very sad that to co-workers, because what if you don't get that job? Because you were lucky to get that job, but if you don't get that job, you will never have the chance to have those mentors. Right. So you have to look for the things, even to go to church and look for it and ask for that and look at people. You see somebody, the person has a lifestyle that you like, and then get closer to these people because sometimes there is no other way uh, around. And I think for, for women, it's even harder than for men. So I congratulate you really for, the, for, the, for doing that because that's very, very, very hard to do, very hard and sometimes impossible. And society is, not, is going to be always hostile. So 
looking for mentors, looking for opportunities as a mass of American Carmen. Also, I like that you you had. See, you're going to mention specific people, but notice that you have teachers, right? People around. Yeah. That's that's the idea. I want to take you to the next one, and next one, because yeah. it's not like your one mentor is going to take you from here, you know, to be the president of the United States. Yeah. But this person will take you from A to B, the other one from B to C, and and you continue your path. You know. Yeah. Thank you. That's true. Any other questions, comments? I think it's very important to be open. Um, I am a foreigner myself, um, and I empathize with a lot of the things that you have said, the challenges and the obstacles, and the successes as well. You know, and I I had mentors throughout my life, and I still have mentors to this day that I listen to and I'm open to. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things that you don't believe that you know it all and that's, you know, the end of the world, uh, the end of the road, um, that you're constantly open to learning new things and, um, and continuing on with your successes. So congratulations for all of your achievements. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. I have, um, when, you, when um, Soren is mentioning the, the mentors, um, he's mentioned Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Um, I was telling the girls that I, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't have a mentor, but I admire a lot of certain Latinas that we've, I've found. Um, one of them is Sonia Sotomayor. You know, being able to see where she's, she's been through and where she's the ending and all that. I took a quote that she wrote in her book. It says, don't let fear stop you. Don't give up because you are paralyzed by the insecurity or overwhelmed by the odds. Because in giving up, you give up hope. Understand that failure is a process in life and that only in trying you can enrich yourself and have the possibility of moving forward. The greatest obstacle in life is fear and giving up because of it. So I take that quote very, very to heart um, because a lot of our struggles is that fear of not being successful, the fear of feeling dis disappointed. And it's all part of, it's all part of being another success, you have to fall down and get up again. So yep. I wish you all good luck and thank you for, for having us. Yep. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here this afternoon. Um, there's some cookies over here if you would like to stay for a few more minutes. If you have any questions for our panelists on a more informal note, feel free to to join us. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.